you know what? But it's fun. Let's let's check out Dieter. Man. Go ahead, Chris. You want to do it? This dude, this, this dude is a. Uh, uh, I think somebody ought to press charges on him at some point. They should have been pressing charges on his ass at Yale. Some of the shit he was doing was criminal, man. Like this one, right? Bam! Like, bam! Hmm. What the hell's going on? Oh, that's fireworks, man. I thought somebody was outside shooting. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? <laughs> nah. No, but Dita is... Uh, let me let me get to the let me get to the uh the bad stuff first. I think if I had to guess by looking at his film, what might be uh keeping him off the field so far is foot speed. Look at that. Look at that. That's that's Robocop slow. That's that's Robocop slow right there. Y'all yeah, got explosions going on out there around me, man. You know, in the neighborhood, man. Fourth of July start really early. <laughs> And it don't stop for next month or so. So, yeah, Dieter is, I think he's, I think he's foot slow. But being a guard in, in this offense, and I shouldn't have said, but being a guard in this offense requires you to be able to move past. What I've seen on film since he's been a pro is a lot faster than he looks right here on this film. But he, but he's, he's a, he's solid, man. He does everything the right way very physical and seem to be adjusting to the football well man i'm, I'm gonna try my best to make a connection with uh olin cruz i'm trying my best to do it right now to see if i can get him on the show because he's the one training the guy he's the one that's been with him the last few years and knows his improvements better than anybody outside of the coaches so i really would love to get Olin cruz on the show and have him describe to you guys what he sees in Dieter as far as his improvement in the time that he's been working with him. So, Olin, if you're looking at this show, I'm sending, I'm sending a shout out to you right now, man. We can use you. Brother, on the oh. Hey, I would love to have you on here, man. Respect. Love to see you on the show. But uh, any of you guys got anything to say about Dieter? What stands out to me about Dieter, man, is his, for his size, man, he's an athletic big guy. Like, he can move. <laughs> Like out in space, like watching him chase down linebackers and DBs and making those blocks, you know, hitting those targets, man. That's not easy to do at 320 pounds, man, 6'4, you know. So, and we also have to keep in mind that he just started playing football uh, at the age of 16. He was a, uh, a rugby player before that, coming from South Africa. A country that you know has limited resources for American football, but he was able to get a scholarship to Yale, and which tells me that he's not only a good football player, but he has to be smart. So uh, I believe in the guy, man. I'm looking forward to seeing how he's developed over the years. Man, you know, and and being from a different country, being able to get into Yale, you know, tells you something about his his brain power. And that he's been able to, you know, last through a regime change and now talking about actually getting some reps going. And when he did show up on the field, it he wasn't out of place. I mean, he got limited reps in like place of like white hair and, you know, in the game type stuff. But he didn't get blown up. You know, he didn't look like if he was, you know, in over his head. So I'm just looking forward to seeing him getting some time in the preseason because hopefully knock on whatever woods you got if he's superstitious we won't have to see him during the year because we have our starting five and they're gonna be all good you know but if we do have to see Dieter I'm glad that he's learned that his brain is there that his strength is there and that he's an athletic so SOB and he's got a little nasty to him and I like him as a backup and if you know white hair or Patrick don't work out Let's see what's up at center. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, you know what? I really, I, I, I'll be honest with you, man. When I, when I hear it, when I, I was listening to a story just last night, just trying to get my, my mind wrapped around what I wanted to say when we pull, pull this video up. And I'm telling you, man, it's, it's fascinating because just like Tripp said, you're talking about a guy that hadn't even played football in South Africa not very long ago. That wasn't that long ago. 
he's been a um, he's been playing football somewhere in the neighborhood seven eight seven to nine years somewhere in that neighborhood. That's not very long. You're talking about guys that that you know guys like us that have been playing football since we were six years old and just know basic things. You know, basic things are secondhand, second nature to us. The basic things. You know what I mean? He had to start from the ground up. You know, learn all that kind of stuff as a as a fully developed human being, pretty much. And you know what? Just think about that for a second. You you out there with a bunch of guys that know this this game like the back of their hands, and I'm starting that. You know, I'm I'm sitting in a high chair as a baby getting fed. You know, that's how that's where he came from, as a fully developed uh, male. You know what I mean? So the catching up that he had to do. And the bandwidth that he must have in his head to, to be able to keep up with it all and develop it at the same time, I thought was freaking impressive. You know, so shout out to Dieter, man. I, I think it's impressive whenever I hear this guys that had no interest in the game, then all of a sudden he's playing the game and he's playing it at a high level. He survived, like you said, Trip. He survived the regime change. I don't know which one of y'all said that. He survived the regime change, got cut, made it back to the roster. And I heard that he was taking uh, the last week of training camp, taking first team reps at center. And so that tells me a lot. That may not mean anything at all, but that also tells me they have faith in what this guy can do in his position versatility. And so, again, that's he's just one of those guys that won't, won't very many people give a chance to make the team or re- better yet, even get into the rotation I think he must be ascending. They like something about Dieter, man. And so I look forward to seeing him on the field and can't wait to see what he brings to the table. Now he doesn't have as much in the way of him breaking the rotation as he did last year. So look, it's, it might be looking good for Dieter. Let's see what happens in training camp. Mm-hmm. Anything, any last things on Dieter, man? Anybody else? No, other than the fact that, you know, I think he fits the scheme and that. He also fits the mentality that I said that I think that this offensive line is going to set for the entire team, which is, you know, that mean, you know, push you in the dirt, punch you in the fucking mouth ass attitude. So that's what I'm happy about that. I'm When you pull that up, that's what you see from Dieter on his tape. Like he will hit you in the mouth. He's going to put your ass on the ground. He's going to lay on you and he's going to get you up, pick, help you up. And then he's going to do it to you again. So <laughs> Same. that's what's up. The first time I started watching Dieter's tape, it was this exact tape right here. And I was just going, I had my little checklist. And the first thing I wrote was nasty. Check. Yes. Next, the second thing I wrote was nasty. Check. And third yeah. thing, I just kept checking that box, man, because mm-hmm. that's a nasty motherfucker, man. He is awfully mean on the football field, man. Yes. Wait, but P-game, P-game. P-game. Huh? Now we got uh, Dieter, he's nasty, but he ain't even starting yet. Tyree Carter had some nasty to him when he got on the field. You know, yeah. the word is that um, uh, Mr. Wright, our number, you know, our first round pick, got some nasty in him. Nasty. Nate Davis ain't no nice dude. Nasty. You know, and Tevin, we all know what kind of motherfucker Tevin is when he's healthy on the field. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a nasty offensive line. Now, let's just hope they can block and, you know, or, you know, physical and do all of the good mental teamwork aspects and move in unison and get that gelling going. But other than that, I'm not at all concerned about uh, quarterback number one, Justin Fields, getting late hits and nobody on the offensive line stepping up. Not a concern with this offensive line or these these group of individuals here that we have coming together. Mm -hmm. So so we're good in the nasty department, right? Filthy, Absolutely. filthy McNasty. I'm getting no ass. <laughs> <laughs>